Super vs. Solar Starting to the bottom left of the map of Yonsu, we have the Protoss player. Once again, he's behind in the series. Can he come back? It is super for Team MVP. And his opponent spawning opposite him to the top right in red. It's Solar. So that's just so strong here. And I'm really interested to see if Super is somehow able to bring us into a third game. I think For him, it must be so super disappointing what's going on here right now. I think he's actually going to try to cannon this time. He has a pylon on the low ground. And he sends the probe down at the time to add a forge. And this is the type of thing that you can do against somebody who keeps playing greedy, keeps playing risky, keeps doing double hatch before a pool, goes hatch first almost every game. This is the kind of thing that you can do where you, you look at this and you go, all right, I've noticed that you play greedy every single time. And uh, now that he shows the probe, though, instantly, instantly upon seeing the probe, the pool goes down, and no more cannoning is viable. Well, it also coincident with him having the, uh, the, the money that he needed. Yes. But, yeah, he's getting the pool right away, and let's see if he can actually uh, um, bring this to, an, uh, to a good end. Guys, one thing that I want to highlight, so Sola is one of those players that is really making a little bit of a showing right now and uh, we have mentioned before that this is one of the few tournaments that Korean players can really play. He is trying to put his name out there in the online tournaments as well, but if you have never heard of this guy before, if you haven't seen him play and you like his performance here today, then uh, make sure that you check him out on Twitter. He's one of the few Koreans that really try to speak as much English as they possibly can, always tweets in English. And his ID on Twitter is at Samsung underscore Solar. So check him out there, at him, and send him a tweet if you like this performance today, if you like this, this play. He's definitely going to be happy about that. And he's a great guy, plays a lot, tries to interact with his fans. So I'm sure that he's going to reply if you have any questions. Yeah. And yeah, just check him out there, at Samsung underscore Solar on Twitter for him. And uh, if you guys are doing that while you're on Twitter, you can follow Gom EXP course the company that runs all of this and uh, you can add the two of us proxy wolf and Caldor, on Twitter we'd love to hear from you as well just get on Twitter and start tweeting all sorts of people because in esports everybody who has a Twitter reads everything and it's always awesome yep. to hear from you guys definitely do that and uh, we would of course as Wolf already mentioned very much appreciate it as well as do the players here we have now the second hatch already started for Sola of course he knew that he was up against the forge opening with the scouting information that he had and that means Th uh, third base started around the four minute mark. Yep. It's gonna have a tight wall here with the probe. Very old school opening for both players right now in this particular game. Uh, pretty normal with a forge expand that we see here for Super. And let's see how he's going to follow this up. What is going to be the tech? Solo, of course, knows that with the opening with Forge into Gateway into Cybernetic Score, the Warp Gate research is going to be delayed. This is the reason why he gets the third base a little bit faster than he would if there was a Gateway opening, because Warp Gate research then would be much, much faster. So yeah. right now, this is what we have seen for a long, long time in Protoss versus Zerg. And these timings have been very much figured out. One of the main reasons why Protoss players try to play more often with the gateway opening because it just allows them to be a little bit more flexible and to be way more aggressive. I mean, basically, if you look at this right now, if you took a screenshot of this and you captured this moment, you could import it directly into Wings of Liberty. There's, there's nothing hard to swarm about this. Uh, it starts the Stargate. And this is something that we've seen in Wings of Liberty as well. The Overlord placement's perfect here for Solar to come in and try to see what the tech is. Takes his gas as natural. And he's actually chrono boosting out his stalker. Looks like he wants to poke a little bit. If he chronobus out the Stalker, he might actually go Oracle, but I think it's more likely we see Phoenixes here. A lot of Zerglings being made right now, 10 in fact, that's 5 uh, Larva spent that's not going to be spent on drones, even spends a 6 one now, going into 12. And with that he's going to be able to secure his third base no problem. No Mothership Core here for, for Super either, as far as I am aware. So he's just going to go into Oracle without it. And there's that poking I was talking about with all these Lings. He doesn't get any damage done. But he forces units instead of uh, drones. Nice scout there also with the Overlord. Sees the Stargate immediately. The third base has been taken so far unnoticed by Solar. But he knows that there is a Stargate. And he can already assume that it is either going to be... Well, what's it going to be? It's either going to be a Phoenix or it's going to be an Oracle. The chances that he starts right off with a uh, Void Ray are slim to nothing. So for now he will just make sure that back at home he has the Queens. He's also going to go into the Spore Crawlers. The bigger question is, when is he going to find out that there is this very fast third base for his opponent? It looks well, like right, right now. now. Zerlings here are slow. Good control here on the Zealot. 
He wants to knock this down so he has a wall, so the base is a little bit tougher to attack. He didn't actually see, though. He didn't see the base. He only saw the units work at the rocks. And the thing is, that's not enough information for him to know for certain, but he's got his Overlord in the position where he could, could go and check. And the fact that he's not doing that means he either already saw it with the Overlord before I could even tell, or he assumes that it's there, I guess. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure he'd send it. But yeah, I mean, the Zerlings alone did not see it. 1-1 one, one upgrades on the way. Void Raya now being started, and Super is going to try to go into that air toss again. Sky toss, as I guess, as it's more commonly called. Uh, careful with the Oracle here, though. Two kills so far, so he snipes two. But he's lost all his shields. He's down to 40 hit points. And the Zergling is still active on the map. Latex started here for Sola, who goes into the 1-1 one, one upgrades for the ground units once again. Especially here for the melee units, of course. Lings are running in, and by now they have confirmed. Yep, now they know that there's a third base. If they were only thinking or supposing there was one before, they have now certainty. Yes. Know it for sure. And with the fast third base here for Super, he's going to have a really nice probe count. It's already up to 57, and he could just continue to, to produce off of triple. His Void Ray count's getting higher, gets the robotic support bay. This attack here does more damage than I expected. The more than it should have. a little bit low, uh, a little bit slow, and Double Stalker goes down. Lings are trying to escape. At least he got a decent trade off here. Yeah, definitely a lot more than he was supposed to get there. 75 harvesters up for Solar right now. Lair is finishing up. 1 1 is finishing up for him as well. And there's the Infestation Pit. Do you think it's Swarmhost we're going to see here? I mean, he doesn't have the uh, range upgrades, so it could just be a fast tech to Hive. I would rather think that it's going to be the fast attack into Hive. I he think so too. have the range upgrade, and also if he goes for Swarmhost right now with the information that he has, he's going to be up against the Colossi immediately. The Swarmhost will be a little bit late there. I do not think that he's going to go for those. It's a little bit too risky in my opinion, especially since Super is now gearing up with additional production. I think Swarmhost would be a bit too late for that. Doesn't have a Spire either. And it also doesn't seem to be really his style here in this game. We saw him going into a, a tier 3 immediately in game number 1 as well, which was granted a bigger map, but still, I don't think we're going to see small most fun. Has a thousand resources. There's the Hive, and this one Oracle being so annoying. And also the, the tag team with the Void Ray is going to keep these Zerglings off of his rocks. But yeah, he starts the, the path in the glance. What? Nothing. Keep the Zerglings off his rocks? I didn't say anything. I mean... Kind of like, uh, I don't know what you're talking, you're talking about. I'm like just that. the happiest person, let me smile. I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, like, it's like the, the, the angry neighbor, like, get off my rocks. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure that's what you're, you're, you're I was thinking the same thing. We have, like, like, this is just like the same train of thought here. Yeah, just get them off those rocks, man. Yeah. Hive tech started here, halfway done, and the plus two, plus two also being started by Solar immediately. So once again, probably going to be a transition into, oh, wow, These those force, force fields. Are fields. Are Bad, but you know what? He actually gets a lot of the Zerlings anyways. He gets a lot of those links, but th these are brutal fail fields that we see from uh, Super here today. Yeah. Also in the first series, like he seems to be a little bit off. The force fields of him are usually much better than that. That was okay in the end. Of, at the end of the day, though, yeah. I guess. But I mean, it could have looked a lot nicer. That's for sure. The thing is, like you know, if it happens in this situation, it doesn't matter too much. He loses a sentry, but he still kills most of the links. If it happens at the wall, on the other hand, later on, then suddenly he will have Zerglings in his main or in the natural. Like Again, like we saw in the first series that they played. There's an aggressive army moving out. It's up in army supply, and the Infestors aren't ready yet. 2-2, Adrenal Glands on the way, and the Ultralist Cavern. So if Super actually attacks while all of this research is being done, while he's getting all these techs and he has a very small army, he might be able to make something work here. The Fungal is good, though. Reveals the uh, invisible units there as well. That observer will go down. It's also about the you know, goes down, but it's also about like scaling him off a little bit. He wants to buy himself time, and that's the goal that he is going to achieve here. More and more links. He's really trying to have a quick look here. How many sentries are there? Can you force field me out? Can I just try to move in? It's two colossi. Two colossi is not the end of the. Oh, there we go. Actually, the queens are ready. Here come those fungals. Time war being used. The zerglings not committing just yet. One queen at the front. Here come those links rushing in. What about those two colossi though? He needs to put pressure onto them, but they get their shots off. They do a lot of damage. They force the zerg player back. The blink forward, trying to pick off as many infestors as possible. No force Five fields, but this doesn't building. matter. You know, he nice fungal, but too late. Too late. And the ultralists are taking a long time to get out here. The colossi, as soon as they're unlocked, are going to keep going. The investors with no support, 
It's not looking good for Solar. He needs a lot more time here. Those six, those six uh, Ultraists, if they pop out the wrong way, it will just get targeted down instantly. It looks like it's going to be too late already. He's down to 70 so. army supply against 100. That's never a good position to be in. And all those Stalkers with the upgrades can target down the Ultraists. There won't be, even be Katina's plating off 3-3, so they will be still very, very weak against this. I think he knows, too, the way he positions his Stalkers. It's like he's just waiting for them to pop out. I mean, what else could it be? Yeah, one, two, down. GG. GG. We're going to have Super. a game three. <laughs> yes, we're going to have a game three. The first map that Super wins in two best of threes against Solar. And now, do you want to take a wild guess well, what's going to be map number three? Dale's point. If I had to Really? Guess. Dale's really? point. I mean, you asked me, so I thought, yeah. I thought, I'd tell you. Dayless point. I mean, it has to be Dayless point. What else would you choose as a Zerg player? The interesting thing on uh, the first time that they played the map was though that Sola went into a very normal build, relatively normal. Speaking uh, of Dayless point, he tried a very Zerg favored map where most Zerg players will go into cool gas right at the beginning to get the speed out a little bit faster. So I really want to see if he's sticking with the build that he chose the first time that they played, or if he will go into the fast speed so that he can put pressure onto the natural. Dayless Point, of course, what else would it be? If he didn't pick Dayless Point, that would have actually been the biggest upset of the week. Yeah, probably. Super, the question is, does he go Forge Gate Wall at his opponent's base? Does he play uh, Blink Stalker play? Does he do DTs off of one base? Does he play a standard style? It did not work out for him last game, but I don't think it was because of the map. I just feel it was because Solar played well. The map made it a little bit less comfortable, that's for sure. And, he, and Solar didn't have to worry about any attacks, like you said. Yes, yeah, that's a big problem. The Protoss player cannot really move out because usually when you move out, you rely on the wall being there and stopping Zergling run bys. That is not an option if you're playing on a Daedalus. You need to have a completely different strategy there. Well, Solar versus Super, the game is starting. It's the last map of the day, ladies and gentlemen. Daedalus point, it is Solar's map choice. Here's the GSL Kurei with Carl Wolf.